All right, so now we are going to learn about AC generator. This is your lesson number five in electromagnetism. So if you have not gone through the videos of lesson one, two, three, I would suggest that you go through them if you want to really understand this chapter on AC generators nicely. Now, AC generator is a chapter which many students find difficult. But believe me, if you go step by step, it is a very easy chapter. And I'm very sure that by the end of this video, you'll understand all about the functioning of AC generator. Right? So let us look at these two pictures. The first picture is a picture of the windmill which produces electricity by using the wind energy. The second picture is the picture of a hydroelectric power turbine which produces electricity by using the power of the flowing water. So here in both the cases if you see there is the motion of the wind and in the second picture there is a motion of the water which is used to produce electricity. An electric generator let me use a different color pen an electric generator converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy so what is mechanical energy mechanical energy is the energy of the motion so it converts the energy of the motion into electrical energy and if you recall from the previous chapter on motors you would remember that motor does exactly the opposite. You put on the motor, you provide the electricity, and what do you get as the output? A motion. Input is the electrical energy for the motor, and the output is the mechanical energy. For a generator, the input is a motion, a mechanical energy, and the output is the electricity. Right? So how does an electric generator look like? Let us understand this. The parts of a simple alternating current generator. So what is AC generator? The full name of AC generator is alternating current generator. We'll understand what is an alternating current as we proceed through this lesson. So let us first start with understanding the parts. So the picture that you see here is a picture of an AC generator right now let us look at its parts one by one we'll go through each of its parts it consists of rectangular coil which is forced to spin in a magnetic field so can you all spot the rectangular coil here so this is your rectangular coil right it is forced to spin how is it forced to spin we'll talk about it as we proceed to the video right so the first part is understood the rectangular coil second part the end of the coils are connected to the slip rings so if you look at the end of the coils it is connected to this ring like structure these are called slip rings or the commutator ring so let us just trace the path so one end of the coil if you see it's connecting to one of the slip rings the wire goes all the way makes a rectangle comes back and the other end connects to the other slip ring the second slip ring so i'm writing number one and two for the two slip rings there is no connection the one end of the coil connects to one slip ring the other end does not just touch the first slip ring it goes directly from the inside to the second slip ring as is shown in the picture right this is very important to understand now the third part the slip ring presses on the conducting brushes if you see the slip ring are in constant touch with the brushes the slip ring are the part which moves which turn so as they turn they always maintain a contact with these flexible brushes these brushes are made up of conducting material they are these are flexible material which are all the time pressing against maintaining a contact with the slip rings then through the brushes 
the two ends of the voltmeters are connected. So through the brushes, if you see, the two ends of this voltmeter are connected. You can have a voltmeter or you can have an ammeter. Both of them help you to determine if there is a current flowing in this particular loop of wire that you see here. So these are simple and simple terms, the part of your alternating current generator. And these red things, red blocks that you see here, obviously, as you all might quickly identify, these are the magnets, right? Okay, so let's zoom into the picture of a wind turbine and water turbine. So where is the generator here? This is a question, where is the generator? Okay, so here we have the generator. So inside the back part of this vent mill, what do you have? You have two pieces of magnets with the opposite ends facing each other. In between these two magnets, you have a rectangular coil which is forced to rotate. So as I told you in the previous, a few moments ago, that this rectangular coil is forced to rotate. So what forces this coil to rotate? the wind, the wind blowing on the blades rotates the turbines. The center part of the turbine is attached here to the split rings which rotates. The split ring is permanently welded or attached to the two ends of this rectangular coil. As a result, the rectangular coil here rotates. All right, so you are rotating the rectangular coil and between the two magnets, what do you get as a result? You get electricity coming out. You have electricity coming out. Electricity. All right, so simple, easy to understand. Let us now look at this water turbine or water mill. So where do you think the generator could be? The generator could be here somewhere or somewhere on the other side. Right, let's fix a generator on this side. You have the rectangular coil which is permanently welded to the split rings which is attached to the center of this windmill. When the windmill rotates, the split rings here rotate. As a result, the permanently fixed rectangular coil also starts rotating in between these two magnets. So you have motion happening in between two magnets. You have a motion happening in a conductor in a magnetic field region. What do you get as a result? You get electric current. Very simple, right? So let us understand a bit more details about it. Okay, so here we are. Let's understand the working of the electrical generator. So you have two magnets, north and south. These are not two generators. You see two pictures here. They are not two generators. The same generator, the two scenarios. Let us focus on the first picture here. For time being, please ignore the second picture. Right, so let us Assume that you started initially with the position of the rectangular coil something like this A, B, C, D. Let us name the ends of the rectangular coil like this. You have the two slip rings. One end of the coil is attached to one of the slip rings. Let's call it slip ring 1. And the other end of the coil is attached to the second slip ring. If you zoom into the slip rings, you'll see something like this. One end of the coil coming to ring one, the other end is coming to the ring two. There is no intersection, no connection between ring one and ring two. Ring one and ring two are two separate entities. They are not touching each other, right? They are just connected to the two ends of the rectangular coil. All right. Now let us focus on the end AB. Let us focus on the end AB and the end CD of the rectangular coil. Let's start with focusing on AB, right? 
Suppose, suppose that the coil is turning in such a way, in such a way that the side AB is coming out, side CD is going and it's turning, side AB, this is AB, that's how the motion is happening, right? AB is going up, CD is going down. So let's use the Fleming's, Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of the current produced in this rectangular coil. Let's use the Fleming's right hand rule. Please take out your right hand. Make the first finger point in the direction of the field. The thumb comes out of your screen. The thumb has to come out of your screen. Why? Because the side AB is moving out of the screen side AB is moving out, you'll see that the second finger will give you the answer. The answer for the direction of the induced current. So the current flowing in the end AB is this way. The current flowing in the end CD is this way. Right? Now let's complete the direction of the flow of the current in the entire circuit. So current comes all the way like this. Follow the arrows Suppose that this is your load. The load can be your electric bulb, it can be any particular device which is connected to the circuit, right? It can be an electric heater, it can be a geyser, it can be a refrigerator, any electrical equipment, right? The current flows all the way, moves into and enters the slip ring one and enters the side AB of the rectangular coil. So how is the current flowing? Let's follow the path. That's how the current is flowing. All right, now let us understand the second picture. What is happening in the second picture? The second picture, the second picture depicts what happens after half a cycle after half a cycle the end ab will move it will move it will rotate and reach the other end if you see and ab has come on the other side and the ncd is now on the other side the sides are switched right but again the how is the movement happening the coil is rotating this way so what what is the direction of the motion of the side cd the side cd is coming out of the screen please use fleming's left hand rule use fleming's left hand rule to follow the find the direction of the current in the end cd coil cd is coming out of your screen coming out of your screen make the first finger point in the direction of the magnetic field the second finger will give you give you the direction of the current in the side cd Similarly, you can apply the Fleming's, Fleming's right hand rule for the side AB. Side AB is moving inside the screen. So here I have my hand. The thumb is moving inside the screen because the movement is happening inside the screen. The thumb is pointing inside the screen. First finger gives you the direction. Now the second finger gives you the direction of the current. The current is moving now from b to a now let us complete the path of the current complete the path of the current if you see in the load the current has now reversed compare these two arrows compare these two arrows The current inside the load has reversed after half a cycle. So the current produced by the AC generator reverses its direction every half a cycle. This is what we have understood here, right? So that's how the working of the electric generator or the AC generator is explained. All right, the important thing to note here is that the current inside, the current in the circuit reverses its direction every half a cycle. 
this is a very important point to understand the direction of the induced current reverses its direction every half a cycle so here it is something important to understand how do we plot the graph of the current produced by the ac generator so you have your two magnets when the plane of the coil is is parallel parallel to the magnetic field lines then the emf which is induced is the maximum so if you have your two magnets right and the rectangular coil in between is like this flat two magnets rectangular coil flat in between two magnets rectangular coil flat in between then the induced emf is the maximum right induced emf falls down as it turns the induced emf falls down this is your coil and when when your rectangular coil is perfectly vertical as in the second picture perfectly perfectly vertical the induced emf is zero the coil keeps turning now now the coil is flat again but the opposite end is facing up earlier the coil was like this straight opposite end facing up the induced emf is again the maximum but in the opposite direction right let us understand maximum emf say it is 5 volts here also maximum emf 5 volts but in opposite direction negative 5 means emf is induced in the opposite direction right so from here onwards from this point onwards to this point onwards how is the motion happening we were here again like this right again in a vertical position here again in a vertical position here induced emf becomes zero right so that's how you plot the graph this is an alternating emf by alternating because your emf is not constant at the various values of the time if you look at the time axis the emf increases comes to a maximum point at this position of the coil when the coil is flat when the coil becomes standing again the emf drops to zero coil becomes flat again emf is maximum in the opposite direction coil becomes standing alone again then the emf becomes zero so that's how you plot the emf it is varying with time increasing to a maximum value zero increasing to a maximum value in the opposite direction coming to zero so on so forth so the graph of the alternating current the graph of the alternating current looks something like this this is your graph for the alternating current this is your alternating current the graph for the direct current is a straight line direct current what produces direct current your cells your batteries they produce direct current where the emf is constant throughout the current is constant throughout whereas the power supply that you get in your homes on which all the devices in your homes work it is a ac power supply right here here the current increases to a value decreases to zero reverses the direction increases decreases to zero reverses the direction it is an alternating current and its frequency is quite high you do not notice the current going down to zero but it is alternating all the time right the power stations in the cities power stations which are outside the cities they are not in the cities which are supplying electricity to your homes to your cities are actually producing alternating current the source of direct current is your battery and your cells please do remember very important concept another thing that you should make note of is this the magnitude of the induced emf is the greatest when do you have the greatest magnitude of the emf when the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field so these are the maximum points right the plane of the coil is 
parallel to the magnetic field lines at both these points. Plane is parallel. So we are talking about this and this picture. So the first point tells us that the magnitude of the induced EMF is the greatest, greatest, greatest. When? When does it happen? When the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field. Scenario this, scenario this, scenario one, scenario two. The magnitude of the induced EMF is zero when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Induced EMF is zero. When? When it is perpendicular. We are talking about scenario three, scenario four. Perpendicular. Magnetic field lines going like this and your coil is perpendicular. Right? Then you have your induced EMF as zero. Your induced EMF at these points is zero. Right? Very, very important point and concept to understand. If you have further questions on this, please do type in the comment box. I'll try and answer all of them. If the coil rotates fast, then the AC current will have higher frequency and higher peak. Now, this is a very important point to understand. If the coil is rotating fast, if the coil is rotating slow, the alternating current, say, is like slow. Say if the coil is rotating fast, then not just the frequency changes, but also the amplitude changes. You'll have a higher amplitude and a higher frequency. This is what this point is telling us about. If the coil rotates fast, then the AC current will have higher frequency if you see higher number of waves in a smaller space and greater peaks, greater amplitude. All right, so we finished this chapter. The next chapter will be on transformers. I hope you have learned this chapter well enough. It is a very easy topic. Once you understand all these concepts, you should be able to solve its questions very easily.